Young Justice Episode 8 Review. Let's begin. First, we start off with a scene that we actually seen from uh, Season 1. is when Artemis meets her sister. And I remember watching Young Justice and the scene because we didn't know their backstory yet. And she just let her go. And I'm like, hmm, that's very interesting. Different hair color, so I didn't know they were sisters at the time. But they brought us back to the scene first. And then we cross over. Now they're fighting together trying to save Orphan. And if you look at the date, it is April 21st. Still on Santa Prisca. And... Lady Shiva's like, okay, uh, none of you are leaving, and let's go. And as we fast forward, we fast forward to Smallville, which was kind of shocking. I'm like, what are we doing in Smallville? And then you realize it's the Superboy thing. It's April 21st, and we see right here, I know why Cage, uh, the Cage Cat sings, and that's the name of the episode, the title of the episode. We see... Lois and a young uh, Clark Kent son, Jonathan. And, you know, he's at his grandmother's house like any uh, young kid would be. And got a tractor. And young uh, Jonathan Kent asks grandma, where is Connor? And everybody gets a little bit sad because they know Connor is no longer here. And you see Wolf. There's a big howl. You know, in honor of Connor's name. And then we fast forward to Gotham City. April 21st, we see Oracle or Barbara Gordon still dealing with the situation of the, the warehouse. So now they're just standing. Everybody's giving their speech about what they're going to do, what's happening, how they planned it, how they scheme. You know, the regular, you know, TV show thing. And then Oracle tells uh, Artemis, um, yeah, uh, keep them talking because uh, Orphan is almost free. So Art Artemis is, you know, doing her talking, saying, oh, you guys use the uh, the nanotech. I think that was from season one. Yeah, season one. And they enhanced it. They made it better, but it cannot be done at long range. It can be done at short range. And, you know, they're talking and they're showing how uh, they made Onyx uh do what she needed to do they were actually testing her loyalty because um vandal savage's daughter saw that onyx wasn't the most loyal and was kind of breaking so they did a test to to tell their secret plan they made sure she knew about it and it gave them an opportunity to release the little nanite bots to get the information and Onyx was who they thought they were. She wasn't ready or she's not one of them. Released the Nanites. And then something cool actually happened. So probably to me, the best fight I've ever seen in Young Justice. They knock the lights out. <laughs> Lady Shiva says, go to infrared mode. And then to be honest, some of the coolest Young Justice fight fight I've ever seen. It's just dark and they're going after after fighting in the dark, doing their little uh, talking. And when Lady Shiva is beating the crap out of uh, her daughter, just brutal. You see the blood everywhere, just beating her down, letting her know her place. And then Artemis is like, mm, you're not ready for your mom. Let me let me take over here. And, you know, they're fighting. She's like, take who I was fighting. They're fighting, doing things. And then Lady Shiva stabs Artemis in the leg, which I just... I just love the brutality of uh, Young Justice, especially now, because they couldn't do it on a, a Cartoon Network. They're showing the blood, the stabbing, everything, and just the melee of the whole situation going on. And then finally, the lights turn back on. All the guns are pointed at um all the girls, and Lady Shiva is, is being... Uh, diplomatic she's like all right um artemis you can go but everybody else is staying here the traitor your sister everybody else is staying and obviously she knew that wasn't gonna happen then all of a sudden you see they disappear disappeared in the floor and shade for some reason transported them outside 
And the funny thing about that is, um, Lady Shiva uh, goes through the uh, the black, and she kills two of her own men as soon as she come out. That's how mad she is. It's like, oh, okay, so now she ain't calm anymore. And Shade is telling her, like, listen, um, I just want to let you know, I'm a I'm a free agent now. Uh, so I, I don't work for you. If you need me, call me, but you got to pay me, uh, a rate now. And then cycle comes in and starts to shoot. And Artemis is like, listen, he's locked on you. Um, you're going to die. And she's like, listen, just leave my daughter. I want my daughter. And they're like, nope. So they get ready to leave. Lady Shiva is, uh, saying a whole bunch of things to get her daughter to stay like this and that and then once she says i know all i know all <laughs> all who you hang out with i know where to find you don't try to hide from me and when i find barbara gordon I, i'm gonna kill her because i got shadows everywhere and that set orphan off and artemis tries to stop her but couldn't you know <laughs> she, her leg is injured and then orphan is fighting her mother you know taking her on and I knew something was weird when she actually got a chance to stab her mother in the chest. I said, we just saw her take on her daughter a couple seconds ago. There's no way she can get stabbed in the chest and stabbed in was it chest. Maybe no stomach. My fault. Not chest. She got stabbed in the stomach. I'm like, something's wrong here. That's not supposed to happen. And she has her sword up to her mother's neck and Barbara Gordon's like, listen, don't do this. You're not a killer. This is not a, don't, don't do this. Uh, this is not who you are. You've changed. And as you can see, her mother is there just like, yes, do it. Just want to, just want to see that, that, that monster that she created, the, the, the energy, all that energy that she put into her daughter. Like, yeah, you can see her smiling. It's very sadistic. I, I'm starting to think Lady Shiva, if you want to date her, there's you can't be nice. There's got to be a sadisticness to her. And I don't know who Orphan's father is, but that must be a very strong man because Lady Shiva does not seem like the type of girl you want to deal with. One, because she can fight. Two, because she has a sadistic side to her. And you can see Orphan is like, you know what? I'm walking away from you. I'm not what you made me to be. I'm going to be my own person. And she gets visibly mad visibly upset that her daughter didn't kill her or at least try to kill her it's just that's very strange but <laughs> okay and now she's just screaming just going crazy and you can see i guess through all that she actually does care for her daughter um in a sense that she she loves her daughter she wants her bad maybe it's a possession thing i don't know Fast forward, you see back to uh, Artemis and her sister um, to that same scene in the first season of Young Justice. And her sister goes back to uh, the shadows or uh, what was it? The League of Assassins. And she says, why didn't my sister kill me? And he was like, because she's family. She's not going to kill you in the sense that she loves her. And it, it was just, it was shocking to her, but it just shows you how messed up Cheshire's mind is, is that she can't, she, cause maybe she would have killed her sister. I don't, I don't know, but you can see her mind is really broken. And then we fast forward to present day, April 21st, Key West, somewhere in Florida, they're at a safe house. You know, Young Justice, Batman, Justice League, they got a lot of safe houses, a lot of places. So she's getting, you know, bandaged and, you know, they're just sitting there dealing with the aftermath of what happened. And then who calls her daughter and her ex-lover? And Artemis is like, hey, how you doing? How's everything? And, you know, Cheshire just sitting right there. And she said, look what I made. You know, a kid being excited. And it's a mommy mask. It's the the mask that her mother wears and that set Cheshire off. She like, I can't deal with this. She ran out and Artemis was like, okay, I'll call you back. You know, as quick as she could. It just, you can see that she's just really messed up 
mentally and you fast forward Artemis is somewhere in the Caribbean Sea it's still April 22nd and she's with uh, the other two and you can see a, a helicopter and who do you see you see Cheshire flying the helicopter You're like what in the world is going on and she's flying this helicopter and all of a sudden it turns around to go she sees Artemis following her she turns around to go to fly and to clip Artemis while they're flying the cycle, they fall in the waters and she's like, what is going on? And then she crashes the helicopter on Infinity Island where, where uh, Rayshaw Ghoul Ghoul stays. And she's and the guy asks her, are you ready to live or are you ready to die? Because he told her, come back if you're when you're ready, uh, when you made your decision to live or die. And she's back and I guess she's ready to die. She's just done with everything. And then Artemis comes in and stops her from uh, trying to attack. And one of the best parts about this, uh, you see the red hood over there, Jason Todd says, uh, the great one will not like this. <laughs> and he was gonna, you know, take his sword out and do a little thing, but he stopped her. And then you see Artemis and Cheshire having a sister heart to heart, like, you know, come back be with be with your daughter be with will and then she finally reveals why she's been distant from her daughter and will the entire time she's she says she does she's more like her father and she will treat her daughter like how their father treated them and you can see that you know she's scared she's she doesn't want to do to her daughter what their father done to them and Artemis had to remind her, like, hey, I was dad's daughter, too, and see how I turned out. You know, just a very nice emotional, you know, breakthrough to what Cheshire's going through. And then you see, um, I forgot the guy's name, but they're talking. And then who pops up? Rachel Ghoul, the great one. And he says to them. Listen, um, and to Onyx too. Let me let me not pass that. Onyx said she felt the same way. She felt the best when she was on uh, with the league, and she it felt more like a family than what uh, <laughs> with uh, Lady she what uh, Lady she was doing, and she wanted a family, and so so does Cheshire. So Rachel Gould comes out and says, "Listen." I'm going to allow both of you to stay. Um, we will, we won't harm you. We'll allow you to stay. We won't kill you, and we'll let you into our family, which I think is very nice of Rayshaw Gu. You know, he gets a bad rap, but I guess deep down he's really not a bad guy. And you know, their Cheshire doesn't believe what Rayshaw Gu is saying, and it's always one of my favorite lines. They actually use it in um, Endgame of he told Artemis, and this is another clapback. What did your friend say about me? Rachel Ghoul is many things. A liar is not one of them. And I just love that because that's from, uh, I think it might have been season two. But all in all is just another clapback to earlier seasons. They're, the great thing about Young Justice, they are putting all the puzzles together. They gave us bits and pieces and now they're closing in a sense like a donut hole and showing and ending certain arcs of characters that were giving them in a sense a lot of closure and artemis was like all right i'll let you do it um you can take my sister and onyx i'll come back to make sure i check on him rachel ghoul is like listen you can come anytime and i, I can say he's a stand-up guy in uh that direction and one of the things that um the guy said was that you guys felt like a family here it was all manipulation it wasn't true we just like to manipulate people. We watched you since you were in, since you were young. That's how he described it. And even though it was manipulation, it made him feel good and it gave him maybe a, a sense of purpose. So I thought that was a very interesting um, thing that was in the episode. And after all of that, and after Artemis and everybody decide who decides to stay, they had a little montage. You see. Uh, April now it's April 22nd uh 
the Kent family is just sitting there, you know, he, his son is riding wolf. Um, he explained what, uh, trying to explain what death was to his son. And, you know, Superman's going through it too. Cause you know, him and Superboy had a rough start, but they, you know, obviously they became close. He became a mentor and it's hard. Cause remember this is months after Superboy died, Superboy's nowhere to be found. We still think he's alive, but in, in this universe, to them, he's dead. He hasn't been seen. A kryptonite bomb took him. So it's you see how everybody's dealing with the the death of Superboy. And I think it's good. Maybe some people won't like it, but I think it's good that they're going through every how everybody, you know, feels. It is much better than what they did with the Beast Boy thing to me at the in the earlier stages. Because to me, that was really just weird seeing Beast Boy act like that. And then they just... And Beast Boy's still not together, but I, I kind of like what they're doing at least once an episode, showing the impact of Superboy dying of how... Remember, th this is Justice League. This is Young Justice. It's all a family. And now we fast forward to Gotham, same day as, uh you know, what we just saw with Smallville, April 22nd. Sandra Kane and... uh. Barbara Gordon, they reunite family. She's happy to be back. And you see Cheshire, Onyx, uh, Red Hood, and the other guy just sitting there as a family meditating. You know, they're trying to get their lives back, be better, you know, and that's the main important thing. She's Cheshire, she, she's done a lot of things, killed probably a bunch of people, but she's trying to be better. And that's the, the most important thing. Who knows where this storyline is going to go? Because right after that, you see Talia and young Damien. And she's holding her son. He's sleeping. And you know, whatever Young Justice writers is cooking up for this storyline, for them specifically, it's got to be. It's got to be good because they they keep coming back to it. And Damien is young. My only biggest fear about this is either one of two things are going to happen if they get a season four. It's either going to be a minimal time jump or we might jump 10 years to see young Damien older. This this is like a a bigger fear of mine. It's like, I, I don't know where we're going to go after the season if they're allowed to have another one. But it's like, man, we might miss 10 years. Or we, it could be five, could be seven, but there might be a massive time jump next season. That's my theory. Um... And then we fast forward, still April 22nd, Santa Prisca, Vandal Savage and Vandal Savage's daughter, you know, talking to each other, whatever their whatever scheme they're hatching together, you know, they're just letting it, uh, talking about it. And then we fast forward, we see uh, Lady Shiva with, their bandage, with her bandaged wound, just looking in the empty cell that her daughter freed. And you can see that she is just angry. And she probably somewhere in her soul misses her daughter but she's angry fast forward still april 22nd star city artemis is back home and who, who's waiting for her? mom her niece her dog and will and this is her life she's just happy to be there she's smiling remember once again this is a woman who's going through a lot too terrible childhood losing uh friends lost her boyfriend so this was a great way to end it and a great way to end this arc i don't know who we're getting next week in next week's episode but i really love this episode especially that fighting scene in the dark it was it was a it was amazing fantastic and at the end you see the end credit scene is her a picture with her sister and her a picture with uh wally you know just uh, a great way to end the episode a lot of people um i seen online don't like the way this season of young justice is going they don't like the direction but if you if you go back to the previous at least the first season you know this is what they did they told many stories many arcs and it was fun you get to know the characters this is all they're they're doing they didn't they've done a mole storyline every year so this was a nice twist on a mole situation and you know give the writers credit it's hard to come back from where they were especially after all these years i know a lot of people didn't like season three but 
this is a this is what they're giving us and i kind of like where it's going now it started off slow but you got to admit these last i think four episodes have been fantastic okay that's my young justice episode eight review don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next week